Ninjas, let's get started. Today is going to be our first Whiteboard Friday. So the idea behind Whiteboard Friday is to not do some death by PowerPoint, but try to give us some things that hopefully will help you with your IT security career. So we're going to start the first one with a question that I got asked, you know, kind of tongue in cheek. Somebody asked, you know, well, how do you become the security ninja? And I was like, well, there was a couple of things that you needed to think about. The first thing is going to be your IT security fundamentals. So if you're struggling to understand like a particular type of attack, maybe, you know, hey, how does an ARP cache poisoning and man in the middle attack, you know, actually work? Well, it's probably because you're maybe struggling with your background in Cisco and networking. If someone's talking about privilege escalation and name piped impersonation or token stealing or something like that, you know, maybe what you're kind of dealing with is not strong fundamentals in operating systems. If someone's talking about like a buffer overflow or cross-site scripting or cross-site request forgery and you're having a tough time with that, maybe what you're running into is a little bit of a lack of good fundamentals with programming languages. So you want to have some of these or at least some foundation in each one. It doesn't mean that you have to have 10 certs in each one. You don't need to be the ultimate master in each one but you want to have some fundamentals you know at least one college class uh, you know at least a, you know, uh, you know a few hours in YouTube uh, at least having messed around with it you want to be familiar you know hopefully hopefully real competence in each area okay as soon as you get through with your regular fundamentals this is just your generic IT fundamentals, there's going to be IT security fundamentals that you're going to want to really have a good grip on. IT security fundamentals are going to be things like, how good are you with packets and protocols? In other words, if I give you Wireshark and I give you a packet capture, can you really look at it and figure out what's going on? Processes and services. If you're analyzing a machine and you're trying to determine if the machine is compromised or you're trying to determine if there's a a vulnerability in one of the applications, you know, do you have the ability to really dig into things like Process Explorer, really dig into things like a debugger, you know, Ollie debug, Win debug, Immunity debugger, you know, are you really comfortable with stuff like that, Ida Pro, for example? And then obviously like registry uh, and then configuration files, you know, what are common configuration files and how do you manipulate a system with them? And then how does the registry work? You know, uh, uh, do you know things like uh, auto run keys, for example? You know, where hackers are going to place keys, uh, hackers are going to modify registry keys so that uh, they can maintain persistence through reboots. These are what to me the fundamentals are your basic IT fundamentals and your IT security fundamentals. Now, when I'm looking to hire somebody, whether it be for pen testing, for incident response, for malware analysis, you, you know, exploit development, reverse engineering, it doesn't really matter what it is, you're going to notice that somehow during that interview process, I'm going to be trying to gauge where you are in these areas and in these areas. So your strong, how strong your foundation is, and then when we start getting into IT security specific stuff, how good are you with that? That's where I'm going to be looking. When you actually come to the job interview, there's only a few things that you can bring to a job interview. So let's say you're on the job, or excuse me, you're on the interview and you're like, okay, I'm really looking to get this job. So I'm gonna be looking with, okay, how many years of experience do you have? Now, if you're weak in your years of experience, that's okay, that's okay. What I would say to you is, maybe you don't have a lot of experience, but what else do you bring to the table? Do you have, for example, a lot of certifications? You know, something that demonstrates that you know this stuff, right? Your MCSE, CCNA, RHCE, those demonstrate that you know this stuff. Maybe you've done a series of IT security certifications. Those demonstrate that you know this stuff. 
maybe you've got a, a uh, formal education, college, right? So maybe you did a Bachelor of Science degree, Business Information Systems, Computer Information Systems. You're trying to demonstrate that your foundation is here, okay? So that's what we're doing. When you're coming to the interview, these things are demonstrating what you know. So it's all about the balance of these three. If you're weak in experience, then you're gonna to wanna to show that you're really strong in either certification or, or education. If you've got a lot of experience but you don't have a lot of certification and education, you're probably gonna to wanna to shore those things up or shore up your experience. I wanna throw off a quick aside, quick caveat here. This is the thing that I think people run into the most. They really get their butts kicked by not having a lot of job experience. They're like, hey, I really wanna do IT security. Currently, I'm a system administrator. Currently, I'm a network administrator. Currently, I'm on the help desk. Currently, I'm doing uh, software QA or whatever it is. But I just don't have experience and every job that I'm applying for wants X many years of experience. So my advice to you is apply for those jobs. Apply, apply, apply. Apply for those jobs. Even if you're not qualified, apply for those jobs. Ask yourself this, have you ever worked for somebody who was not qualified for the job that they were in? I guarantee you, you're gonna say yeah to that, right? So, you gotta apply. When people say they want five years of experience in this laundry list of certifications, most of the time that's a wish list. And then, if it's not the wish list and they really need that, Hopefully what you can do is you can bring in tangibles. The intangibles are gonna be those things like, man, this guy is a really good, or this girl is a really good people person. Now, you know, in our world, the IT world, you don't have a lot of people with good people skills. You know, that is the last thing that they're good at. Or maybe you're a strong technical writer. You're really, really good at being able to summarize things and make them easy for someone to understand. Or maybe you just don't require sleep. And I'll tell you what, when I was hiring for people and anybody who works for me now knows that this is something that I look very highly upon. You flat out don't require sleep. I can drop off something at 11 o'clock at night on a Tuesday, tell you I need it at 7.30 in the morning on Wednesday, and you are like, great. I was just hanging out watching House of Cards anyway. Let's jump on it, right? Different intangibles are, are gonna speak to different potential employers where they go, oh my God, this person may be weak in one of these areas, but oh boy, do we really need a strong tech writer? Do we really need a person who will work their tail off to gain experience? These things are important. Last thing, let's say you're trying to get experience and you know, you got that chicken before the egg, cart before the horse thing going on, right? I just if I could get experience, then I could go apply for the job. What I recommend that you do is apply for open source projects. Go to sourceforge.net and join some open source projects. Help developers out. Help write their technical documentation, help debug. You'll learn how to program. You'll meet great people within the industry and go to security conferences so that you can network. These are gonna be those places where you're gonna find where you can get the experience. Now, that drives me over to the crazy puzzle, right? And I talk about this crazy puzzle because most people don't know what they wanna do when they grow up. They know they wanna do security. They heard pen testing is cool. They heard forensics was cool. They, you know, they watched NCIS and they wanna be like Abby, you know, it, it just looks cool, right? And and that's fine, it's perfectly fine. Lord knows that's exactly why I got into it, right? It just looked cool. Yeah, I'd love to do that. If you do all this stuff over here, you do all this stuff over here, you come to the table with this stuff, you will find that this puzzle will start to fill in for you because they're all interrelated skills. If you're really strong with incident response, your ability to do malware analysis, your transition to malware analysis won't be very difficult. If you've been doing regular forensics for a while, your transition to any other area won't be so difficult. If you've got a strong background in web app testing, your transition to source code analysis 
or or you know one of the other areas of testing or maybe if if you've got a pretty good comfortable understanding of malware analysis and you want to transfer to reverse engineering there's going to be so many interrelated skills you'll find that you can actually do that so when people do this you know I tell you you have to eat your vegetables when you do this that's going to give you the freedom to do whatever it is that you want to do on this side of the of the you know of the table whatever it is you want to do over here pretty easy to do okay one of the things I get asked is how do I know I'm ready and you know I, I watch way too much TV as a kid Does anybody remember the TV show Kung Fu you know with David Carradine and he was like grasshopper when you can take the pebble from my hand you are ready to leave this temple right and homeboy was like trying to grab the pebble and he made him like walk on rice paper and then, grasshopper when you can walk on the rice paper and not leave any tracks you're ready to leave. you know I, I can't walk on rice paper nor can I grab pebbles but believe me I can do pretty much all of this stuff right I can do network I can do malware I can do exploit dev I can do embedded devices I can do source code and the reason I can do all those things was because I've got a strong foundation so that's what takes you up this ladder so the ladder is going to be unconscious incompetence you have no idea what you don't know you know it's just ignorance is bliss right you don't know any doggone thing so life is cool because you don't know you don't know anything what you first start to run into is conscious incompetence you start to become aware of this world and you start to realize yeah I realize I don't know Windows I realize I don't know Linux I realize I don't know Cisco that's conscious incompetence and when you're here this is okay this is perfectly okay because now you can chart a path of where you want to go so it's perfectly okay to be here this is fine most of us are here right you can now chart the path to where you want to go that's conscious competence in other words you've now gone through these things maybe not necessarily these certs but you've gotten commensurate experience to show that you know as much as a person who's an RHCE or you know as much as a person who's a CCNA about networking or you know as much about Windows as a person who's an MCSE whether you have this cert or not commensurate experience that's conscious competence I put you down at a computer you may not be really really fast you may have to do a lot of googling but you can muddle your way through it unconscious competence is our top people in the industry they're the people who've gotten this stuff so good and they've gotten this stuff so good that they can just jump to whatever skill they want to and have as much fun doing whatever you walk over and hey we got some malware we need you to analyze the guy jumps right on it hey we've got you know these PCAP files that we need somebody to take a look at the guy jumps right on it hey we got this app and we're not sure if it's vulnerable the person just jumps right on it and that's that unconscious competence and it comes from doing all of this I hope that this kind of helps you out I don't know if I made you more confused or kind of helped you chart a path but every Friday I'm gonna try and do some more videos on this kind of stuff and other topics as well don't get me wrong but I'm gonna try to chart help you chart a path and help you get there and help you become more proficient all right, that's it for today. See you next Friday. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.